Let us pray. Guide us, O Lord, by your word and Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In his letter to the Philippians, Paul encourages a community of faith to stand firm, to be united, to continue on in spite of all the struggles, and above all, to rejoice. As I think about my life and the life of our world today, it almost feels like Paul is directing his words at us. These seven weeks since we have seen each other have not been easy for any of us. Our lives have been put on hold, our routines have been shattered, and many of us are trying to figure out how to navigate and survive this new reality in which we now reside. Some are trying to figure out just what to do while at home, especially if one has been laid off, anxious about how to pay their bills and live. Some still working are trying to manage the new demands of working from home. And some who still have to go into work are trying to remain safe while still keeping supply lines and essential services going. And parents, parents are trying to figure out how to keep their kids occupied, how to navigate homeschooling, and how to get through each and every day. This is placing a strain upon everyone. And recognizing this, governments are opening up telephone lines and chat rooms for people to express their anxiety and to voice the stress they now feel. We live, yes, in anxious times. So did the Philippians. In those early years of the church, it was a struggle. Outsiders looked at the followers of Jesus as strange and odd and naive. Some resented their ways and their teachings. And at the same time, the early church was trying to define itself. Many had differing opinions, and it appears that Udaya and Sintaichi were not on the same page, and Paul has to encourage them to be of the same mind in the Lord. Paul reminds them who they are and who they follow. And it's easy to forget that when you are anxious. Perhaps today, Paul's words also remind us who we are as people of faith. Paul encourages the community then and us today to rejoice. Paul invites us to remember who we are, that we believe that God is love, that God is good, that God's hope will prevail, that the future is indeed bright. When you remember that, there is indeed reason to rejoice. When you remember that God is near, you remember that you are not alone. So Paul invites the Philippians in the midst of their struggles and us in the midst of this brave new world we now live in to still rejoice. You see, when we choose to rejoice, when we choose to see the joy around us, when we choose to remember that God is with us, life doesn't look that scary after all. When you let that joy in, that joy lifts you up. It's like a day like today, a warm and sunny day. You can't help but feel good. Paul goes on to tell the Philippians that they still have work to do, that they indeed have a purpose as people of Christ. And so he calls them to let their gentleness shine forth, to let their compassion be seen by all. He tells them not to worry, but to take those things that disrupt our peace to God. He encourages the people to let their requests be made known to God. He also invites them to see the good around them, to look for the things that make their hearts thankful. If they do this, Paul tells them, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts in Christ Jesus. In closing, Paul encourages them to focus their minds and their thoughts, not on the dark things of our living, but upon the things that lift us up. Whatever is true, he says, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Paul reminds them to keep doing the things that they have learned, received, heard, and seen in him. If they do this, if they choose to rejoice, if they choose to focus their thoughts on the things that lift us up, then the peace of God will be with them. I believe Paul's advice 
is advice that is good for us as well. And so may the peace of God be with us. May we look for the good in each and every day of our lives. May we choose to be thankful. May we remember that God is near. And may we dare, dare to rejoice, to sing, even when the world around us encourages us to remain silent. Friends, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let us pray. Ever-present God, you remind us that we are not alone, that you are always with us. You sent your Son to be our guide, to be our inspiration, and to show us the way. Your Holy Spirit dwells within us, reminding us that you are Emmanuel, God with us. So today, help us to rejoice, to be a thankful people, to be a people who see beyond the problems of the world to all of its potential. Bless our world today. Guide our medical professionals as they continue to seek a cure for COVID-19. Be with all those who continue to work to supply us with the essentials of living. Be with our community partners at Edenwood, Eden Food for Change, Eden Daycare, and Meadowvale Neighbors Care Cafe. Be with all mothers on this Mother's Day. Be with all those who have been like mothers to others. Be with all our families on this Christian Family Sunday. Help us to find joy in those we love. Open wide our hearts to love all, to think of others. And be with all of us today and help us to see beyond our problems to all our blessings. Lift up our spirits, calm our anxieties, give us reason to hope, and help us to continue to sing your song and to rejoice. In hope, in joy, we pray in the name of Jesus, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>